Today, I'm sharing with you guys how to edit these clean cinematic reels that you guys have seen all over Instagram used by the most professional editors, creators out there. And yes, a big shout out to Tom Noski and Kyle Pritchard for, you know, kind of carrying this editing style. But anyways, I'm going to break down this editing style in five simple tips. So that way you guys can go ahead and edit this content yourself. And because your boys got you, practice footage is going to be down in the description below. So go ahead and grab that and follow along with today's tutorial. And just to make it a lot easier to explain it, today I'm going to be using my viral effects pack, which you guys can go ahead and use for yourself you go ahead and click that link down in the description below it is paid but it saves me hours each and every single week so i highly recommend without all the way let's go ahead and jump straight into adobe premiere pro okay so now that we have adobe premiere pro open and our video your guys's video isn't going to be cut up like this if you do follow along it's going to be just one clip so what you guys want to go ahead and do is select the clip right click and go to this button right here called scene edit detection and it's going to go ahead apply cut at each detected cut point hit analyze and then there you go but that's just for the people who are following along okay so for me the first step of editing this cinematic content is going in and doing all the camera movements now each editor is going to edit their own way but i honestly like to go through do all my camera movements and then add on from there so first things first is i'm just going to go ahead and jump straight into the adjustment layer so i'm going to go ahead and create an adjustment layer by right clicking here or clicking this button right here adjustment layer and then just drag and dropping where you want it to be so i'm going to just move my camera movement up here a little bit a couple layers uh, as i know stuff's going to go below it so i just like to place it there so let's see this is the hook right here so i'm just going to go ahead and make this adjustment layer fit the hook now initially when i do hooks i like to do a quick zoom out so i'm going to go ahead and go to my viral effects pack and then we're just going to go over here to the camera movement and we're going to do the camera pull hook drag and drop it and we're just going to see how that looks and to me that looks really clean super subtle pretty far so we're just gonna go ahead and run with it and we're just gonna go ahead and apply these camera movements for the entire video so now that we have our sort of intro sort of done that looks good i'm just gonna go ahead and keep playing it through so what i'm really looking for is for places of emphasis where i want people to feel drawn in or i want to like draw them out of what i'm saying now i'm going to do that simply by zoom ins and zoom outs or simple scale ins or simple scale outs now because i'm actually recording i can't hear exactly what i'm saying um, my audio is all messed up so i'm just gonna go through and do it to the best of my ability to show you guys kind of my workflow okay so i say something about a camera zoom in like pulling people in so let's go ahead and do another adjustment layer just like so and we're just going to do a quick zoom in so i'm just going to drag and drop this zoom in if you guys don't know how to do camera zoom ins go ahead look at this tutorial right here on screen i break down exactly how to do it step by step so you drag that in for a camera zoom in just like so okay so right here i say like zoom out and how we're going to do that is we're just going to go over here to the transform camera zoom in we're going to go right here. We're going to add a keyframe just like so a little bit after. And then because I say zoom out right here, I'm just going to go ahead and scale this back to a hundred and let's play it through to see what it looks like. That looks pretty clean. Let's go ahead and make it look a little bit smoother. Go ahead, just make that look a little smoother. Maybe bring this out a little bit as well. Pretty clean. Let me go ahead and just move this over. W. And that looks really, really clean. Now, something I noticed is that I feel like I'm just too zoomed out in this scene. So again, I'm going to add another adjustment layer and we're just going to go ahead and drag the blank transform tool with the motion blur enabled. And then we're just going to scale this in with the transform tool just so we can kind of get the look that we're looking for. That looks way cleaner in my opinion. So that's really nice. Now, I'm actually just going to go ahead and leave this the same sizing right here. Okay, so this is actually going into another point of like what I want to talk about. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and cut these camera movements and we're just going to keep moving on. Now, what's cool is when you have the camera movements already like sort of laid out, you can just hold alt or option and just drag them over just like so. So that way it's zoomed in. And then I'm just going to go ahead and do a simple scale in here. Just nothing too crazy. So let's do a 100 to 110. We're going to get that like that simple zoom in and just like this. And that looks pretty good. Now I'm just going to keep dragging this out. Maybe move the keyframe over here as well. There we go. So that way it's just a simple zoom in. It looks really clean. W. Now that looks really good. So we're just going to go through this entire process until we are done with all of our camera movements. Okay, sweet. So here is all of our camera movements, just like so. Next cinematic effects is using smooth text reveals. 
And as you guys can see, the camera movements just flow very nicely, very, very cleanly. It looks really good. Like even without any edits, you could just throw captions on this and it'll pass for sure from content. So that's the thing is you want to really just dial in your camera movements, all of these sort of things. So that way, when you apply layers, it actually makes sense and it looks cohesive rather than applying on layers and it just feels like chaos. You don't want this style to come across as chaos. You don't want actually any style to come across as chaos, but this style especially needs to come off just clean and it needs to feel like you have room to breathe. Okay, so now the next step is adding your text and your text movements. Now I'm just gonna do the text that I want to emphasize. So like right here, when I say one smooth camera movements, I just want to emphasize that text. So we're going to go ahead and fill that out. So I'm going to go to the text button just like so. I'm going to go ahead and type in one and I'm going to go ahead and bring this down. I'm going to format it. Um, so I'm going to go over here to the properties tab, just like this. Open sauce sans is one of my favorite fonts, just like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and just center this like this. And then I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this layer. So smooth camera movements. And now I'm just going to go ahead and name this movement and make this smaller. I'm going to actually center this as well like this. And I'm going to move this down now and go over here the one and then do this one. So smooth. Go ahead and make it something like that. Move it over a little bit like so. I'm actually going to move this one over a little bit as well. Smooth. Go ahead and keep that centered. And then this other one right here, I'm going to type in camera. I'm going to turn the font size really small, just like so. And then we're just going to place it right here. Now, this is all just like creative sort of thinking, creative editing. So do whatever you kind of feel is right for the actual edit. So right now I'm kind of just worried about like the actual shape of the edit, if that makes sense, um, rather than the actual placement of it. Uh, the placement we could always adjust and make differently. Maybe I just want to move this up a bit. That look good. Smooth camera. Hmm. I don't think I did this in the original, but we're just having fun. We're seeing what kind of works, what kind of flows proper. And honestly, for this, this looks pretty solid to me. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and stagger these now. So smooth camera movements and hopefully I get the timing right. I can't hear it again, but you guys wanna get the timing right. And to me, that looks pretty solid. So let's go ahead, select all of them. And we're just gonna do a quick, subtle slide in up. So we're gonna go to the four slide effects and we're just going to go to slide in up i'm going to do subtle drag and drop and there you guys go you guys have the cinematic text slide effect again if you guys want to know how to do this style specifically top right corner of the screen it'll show you a breakdown of how to do it i'm just using my preset pack because it's goaded and it's going to save me a lot of time w so that looks really clean now i'm going to right click nest this just like so and i'm going to actually place it where i want it so this looks centered to me if i had more time i would actually make sure it's vertically centered etc but to me that looks pretty solid so we're just going to go ahead and keep moving w so that looks really good and then what you guys want to go ahead and do is go through the entire video adding your sort of text slide effects your text uh, but only focus on the text that you want to be animated and emphasized in your end edit okay so now i have all of my text added in um i actually want to add a glow to this layer so what i'm gonna go ahead and do to add glow to this text is duplicate this just like so and i'm gonna go to my glow sort of effect and right here it is right here glow effect and then you just go ahead drag and drop and it's got a dope little glow w Okay, so now we got step number two, which is text and text movement. We're gonna go into step number three, which is adding your B-roll scenes and also adding in like the blank sort of overlay screens, if that makes sense. So for example, I mean, when I say blank overlay screens, I kind of mean these with text on top. There's just some super simple text effects, blank background, or actual B-roll like this. So how do you actually do this? What you guys wanna go ahead and do is for the text style, you guys wanna go to new item and go to the color mat, like so. You guys can pick any color that you guys want. For me, um, I like to sample actual colors in my scene so it feels a lot more cohesive with the finished product. So I'm just gonna do something like that to me looks pretty solid and then i'm just gonna go ahead and place it exactly where i want it so right here looks pretty good and if you have a dark color you want your text to be light if you have a light color in the background then you want your text to be dark kind of just makes sense so you could actually see it so let's go ahead and just place some text right here this and i'm just gonna go ahead and center it first let me bring this down adjust it length properly and we're just gonna format it however we want it so i'm just gonna center it center it, center it just like that. And then it's going to make cuts for the words that I say. For tutorial sake, I'm not going to go ahead and do it exactly. But real quick, I almost forgot. Now you guys could leave it white. It looks good. Or you could go ahead and kind of 
touch this hue and then just bring it straight down or something like that maybe even desaturate it a little bit um to me that looks pretty good uh maybe it's bring it darker like that yeah so we could literally run that or like i said these colors are completely optional i'm gonna go ahead and just update that and then we're just gonna go ahead and update our text this is the text now this is not what i said uh for tutorial's sake again this is what we're doing so this is the text obviously you want the speed to be a little faster just like so and then for me if you guys want to add like that little bit of a uh, sauce go ahead and use your secondary text for me it's aston script and then you could just go ahead make it look fancy so just like this is what it looks like and you guys could even cut that shorter if you want now flow wise for the edit this probably is going to look weird but we'll just run it and there you guys go you guys have that cinematic overlay sort of text effect and also let's go ahead and add in some b-roll and show you guys exactly how to do that now in the original edit i believe i placed my b-roll like sort of back here so we're gonna do the same exact thing uh i use premiere composer to store all of my b-roll um so i'm gonna go just b-roll right here and we're just gonna select a random piece of footage now me packing up my backpack i think we'll have to do not gonna lie so we're just gonna drag and drop it like so just like this and then what I really enjoy doing for my B-roll is one, uh, actually making sure it's centered properly. So let's go ahead and do that using the motion is making it black and white. This is a completely personal preference, but I see it done time and time again with Tom Noski's content, um, signifying that it's the past. Yeah, that's actually typically what it means. So go ahead and drag and drop this like so. To me, that looks pretty good. You guys could of course edit this any way you want or color grade it normally, whatever. And then uh, as you can see, there's a little bit of overlap at this cut. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that back. And then this looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and add a camera movement zooming in. So adjustment layer, just like so. I'm just gonna go back to my viral effects pack, scale in. Let's just do a subtle one. So 100 to 105. And there you go. You can see that it's slowly zooming in. It looks really clean. Now, take it a step further you guys would add in text but we're gonna do that last okay so that's how you do like the b-roll of like the actual subject and then that's how you do the text with blank background overlay b-roll if that makes sense now it is time for adding your sound effects now this is again personal preference but in my original reel which you guys have seen in the video i ended up using a riser and a riser is a very common thing i use it in all of my content so i'm just gonna go to my sound effects right here which if you want to go ahead and get this for free go ahead and get my free pack on my website you guys can go ahead and check it out super easy to get super easy to install so i'm just gonna go ahead and do a riser metallic just like this i'm gonna add it and the biggest thing with the riser is you want it to be right on the cut of after you're done with your hook I've seen a lot of people really just screw this up and it just feels really awkward when you mess it up. So yeah, make sure it's on the cut of when the hook is over. So what I like to do is hit this icon right here and then just bring up the reverb. And then I like to hit G and just turn down the gain so it's not blaring in your ear. That is something that a lot of beginners do is their sound effects are way too loud and it sounds mad awkward. You don't want your edit to be awkward. So just make sure you're doing the right things. W, there we go. There's the hook, there's the sound effect, pretty dope. And then you just add your background music. So for me, I'm just gonna go ahead and add something like this. Go ahead and do negative 25, negative 28, whatever it needs to be, just set it to. So I'm just gonna start with negative 25 and then see how that sounds. Now I can't hear it, but if it's too loud, then this is when you would type G and then you just turn it down negative five. Or if it's too quiet, um, you could bring it up by just hitting five decibels and it'll bring it up. So there you guys go. That is the sound effects in music. Okay, so now you guys got all of that. Now it is finally time to add your text captions. Now, I used to do this manually back when I first started editing because Premiere Pro actually didn't have this feature, believe it or not. So real quick, before we go ahead and get started on that, make sure you have a blank empty track to drag your text to below the camera movements because you want your text to move with the camera movements. It kind of creates like that 3D camera look. So let's go ahead over here. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit I and then hit O at the end of the edit. You guys don't have to do this, but for me, I do. Go to text tab. If you don't have it, window, text, wherever it's at right here, it'll pop up. And then you guys can create captions from transcripts. I like to do something kind of basic and I like to hit the three dots, generate static transcript. Now, this is my personal preference. You could just hit transcribe, you'll be fine. But this is just what I do. Um, transcribe into out only then it'll go ahead and transcribe your video now that you have the transcription go ahead and hit the double c's for create captions what i like to do is just i like to make this like eights or something like that 
bring these all the way down lines single just like so and then now that you guys have text Go ahead, select it all, go to properties, and then type in whatever font you want to use. I like Akira, so that's what I'm gonna go ahead and use. I'm gonna center it, but also make it not so center. So bring it down like a little bit. So it's kind of like on that third line. Um, if it's not perfect, it doesn't have to be perfect, then that's fine as well. Um, the shadow, I'm not a big fan of shadow. To me, it looks kind of corny. So I like to increase the size, kind of brush it out a little bit, and then it kind of makes it look a lot less appearance like it's not there as much but it still does its job of separating the background with the text so there we go i'm liking that style so from here we just go ahead and make sure that our text is in the right spot so go ahead bring this to the beginning if you want to make cinematic content um delete it wherever it overlaps with other edits like this like right here we're just going to go ahead and delete that as well right here delete it as well because we already did our text and then another pro tip is making sure that your text lines up with cuts so that way it doesn't overlap and look a little funky because it will start to look really weird like let's see if we have an overlap right here okay yeah so there's a cut right here um obviously there's text so we wouldn't want to place it here anyways but if it overlaps with a cut, it just doesn't look right. It looks like loose and just like your brain can tell something's off, but it doesn't know what it is. That's what it is. So you go through the entire video just fixing that. So I'm just going to go ahead and move this over. And because it's a little too short, I'm just going to move that back like so and actually just delete the filler word and it looks way better. Sweet. Okay, so now that you got all your captions exactly where you want them. Select all of them. Go to graphics, titles and windows. Um, Sorry, graphics and titles upgrade caption to graphic just like so hit full screen or uh the escape to full screen your timeline and just select it all drag it down to that empty layer that you had and then there you guys go you guys got your um captions now if your captions are too big which these are um don't be scared to nest them all together and just size them down so go to the effect controls go to scale and bring it down and then i replace it wherever you want it to be to me that looks pretty clean and as you guys can see, because the text is below the adjustment layers, it's actually moving with the camera or the, yeah, the camera movement. And it looks really good. W. Now that you are done with your entire reel, you guys can go to exports and just export your reel just like so. Now I don't have the most optimized render settings or at least not that I think I do, but it's the same exact settings that I use on my Instagram. And to me, they work perfectly. They look really good. So I have no complaints with my render settings. So I'm going to show them to you. Um, so go to the video tab. I like to just match the source, go to more, render at maximum depth, maximum render quality, uh, go to VBR two pass. I like to just leave it at that 37 mark. Um, just keep it mad simple. And then the effects, I do have a gamut compensation LUT simply because when i transfer from my computer to my phone and i upload on instagram there's a lot of contrast that is lost in my look so that's what i do you guys don't have to do it um again if you guys want to actually go ahead and get this commentation let it'll be in this video in the top right corner that way for you guys to use and there you guys go just hit export and you guys will be good to go but anyways guys that is it for me today if you guys learned something please leave a like comment subscribe down below again if you guys want to go ahead and cop the viral effects pack link will be down in the description below and i know it's going to save you tons and tons of time because today it saved me a ton of time but anyways that is it for me damn what do i say bro golly how do i outro this bro for real, bro take action and take over i'll see you guys in the next one Peace out. Golly, bro. That was the worst outro I've ever made, dog. Ow, and I just hit my head. Ow.